Sir, I want to ask you one thing. Yeah, yeah, of course. That will I be able to uh, prepare for my AS uh, in this October November session? Uh, yes, that's the goal. So the syllabus is prepared in a way so that you can. Uh, we'll cover all the topics for AS physics before that. How come is that possible? You know, it's very less time remaining. And will it be easy? It is uh, possible, of course. Uh, of course, I'd like uh, to request this thing from, uh, I, I do this from all the students that uh, to be on time for the class. As long as uh, you can be on time for the class, we can, uh, we can uh, cover everything, right? So uh, the syllabus is a design in that way. Yeah, when because we we, this is, we'll, yeah, so after after every topic that we cover, we'll be doing past papers. Now, this is completely up to you. If uh, I would be, uh, I think you were not there present in the class, but I would uh, be doing this thing where you should be telling me if I should be spending more time on uh, the theory part uh, or more time towards the past papers. It's, it's so, up to you, whatever you think is good. Uh, I mean, uh, okay, so so the thing is that if you have gone through some of the, uh, have you gone through these topics before? No, I haven't. So this is your first time uh, in being introduced to all the topics that we are doing? Yes, it is. Right, 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 right. So that's why we have to uh, we have to give uh, an adequate amount of time to a theory part as well and uh, the past papers part as well. But I'll try to uh, kind of speed up, and then I'll ask you if that is okay with you. If you're still understanding things, if so, then we'll stick to that particular speed and then we'll uh, go from there. So after every chapter that we cover, we'll uh, do some of the past paper questions as much as we can for those topics. And so that's how we'll be proceeding. Okay. okay. Right? I got you. Okay. Okay, great. So, I mean, of course, it has been uh, today. It has been late as well. The class starts at 545, but it's 10 minutes have passed. So let's, uh, let's see. Uh, can you see the screen? Is it visible? Yes. Uh, yes. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. So let me just zoom in a bit. Okay. Looks good. So did you get time to go through the topics that we were doing uh, last time? Is there any question? The, I, I don't know the topic like the topic were. Oh, so you're not making notes. Uh, I recommend uh, you to make notes in at least a form of bullet points or so on, so that you know that what we have covered. And of course, then you should also, uh, when you uh, when the class is over, uh, you should find some time and you know go through these topics from the book as well. So when you come in the next class, you can ask. Uh, you'll you might have questions, and you know you can fire them away at me, and so I can answer uh, your questions as well. Okay, sir. Yeah. So, so of course you will have will have to do it do this way that you also have to go through the topics by yourself and then come back in the next class. And if you have any queries, uh, you feel free to ask whatever uh, yeah. is the question, right? So I'll also be uh, sharing these notes. I think I should be sharing these notes with you as well. The notes are actually also uploaded on uh, the Mega Lecture website. There is a section for notes on the website and there if you scroll down you'll find under the physics section you'll find physics notes by basil right so uh, over there you can find uh, the notes as well they are currently uploading the, these notes but i think i'll share them uh, in the group as well so yes, yes, yes. so that you can go through the notes uh, at your own pace as well right okay. so uh, so then we'll now continue with the next topic that we were doing, which was uh, the displacement time graph. We discussed graph in quite detail uh, last time. So let's move on to the uh, application of these graphs in physics. The first one is the displacement time graphs. Now, displacement time graphs, uh, the name suggests it. It gives you a relation 
between displacement and time right so how does the displacement change displacement of the object uh, when some time passes so we can look at this thing in this way suppose that uh, you have an object and it travels some distance of course to travel some displacement right it will uh, it will take some time to go from this point to this point so we can draw we can represent this situation on a graph and understand what is happening now not uh, for a displacement time graph the time is usually represented on the horizontal axis and on the vertical axis we have displacement which is denoted by this s and it's measured in meters so now we can this graph can look like many things for example if i have this graph uh, like this which is really a straight line this straight line means that the ratio between displacement and time is constant everywhere so if i divide this displacement with time at every point it will be a same value right because the slope that, that uh, what i'm talking about is the gradient right gradient or slope of the graph and we know from mathematics that the gradient or slope of any graph is calculated uh, in general from mathematics it's change in y divided by change in x which means change in the value on the vertical axis divided by change in the value on the horizontal axis in our case we have change in displacement divided by change in time so this means i can pick two points on this line right i can pick any two points on this line suppose i pick one point over here and then another point over here so if i go down from this point i throw a perpendicular directly downwards this gives me a value for t suppose that this value is some t2 and if i draw draw a parallel line to the x axis or this time axis like this i can get a value for s suppose it's some value s2 now similarly i can do it for this point i can drop a perpendicular like this this gives me a value for t1 any value for time at this point and then this value gives me the value for displacement <clears throat> at this point now to find the gradient or the slope i just have to find the difference between these s2 minus s1 and divided by the difference between times which is t2 minus t1 so that's the slope of the graph and if you remember what was velocity recall that velocity was defined mathematically as change in displacement divided by change in time and you can clearly see that these two things are similar which means that the slope of this graph is what this implies that the slope of this graph gives you velocity right so are you following along is this understandable yes sir it is sir uh, okay. is there any yeah. recording up uploaded somewhere like on any platform Le uh, recording uh, lectures like recorded lectures like if i want um, to some of them you can find them on youtube's uh, mega lectures youtube channel but uh, you probably not find all of them because again it is uh, that you you are enrolled in the course and you are requested to attend all the classes right and be enrolled in the course and take your lectures so i can also i also have to keep a track of your attendance and so on okay like so if i if i want to revise so can can i not uh, just uh, go back and see all the uh, recorded lectures like right? Uh, one of the things I can do is I'll obviously I'll share these notes with you as long as you are enrolled in the course. And about recordings, I'm not sure, but I think as long as you are uh, enrolled in the course, registered for the course, uh, perhaps we can share uh, the recording so that you can go back and revise. Uh, I want to do so. 
but I try to note these things down. Whatever I'm talking about, I try to write as much as I can. So I'll also be sharing these notes with you if you're enrolled in the course. So you can also, you know, have a look at these notes as well. Okay, sounds good. So even if you have a, you, you have any questions whatsoever, you can feel free to ask me anytime. So if you have any doubt, anything, you can drop me a text on WhatsApp as well. I'll get back to you as soon as I can, and then we can discuss it in the class as well, right? Okay, cool. So, so we have uh, we have established that the slope of this graph, a graph of displacement versus time. The slope gives you the velocity of this object which was moving. All right, now we can look at some of the cases. What, first case is, let's, uh, let me write it down this way. So we'll now examine some of the cases of this thing. All right, so perhaps you can have a graph which gives you uh, a gradient zero. So suppose that if the slope is zero, the graph for this thing looks something like this. Let me try to draw it. All right, so this is time. Again, this is displacement. And if I have a line which is parallel to this T axis, right, this line, you can see visually there is no slope, right? Slope is when you have a line which is at some angle to this axis, right? So if there is some angle to the time axis, then there is a slope. Slope is not zero in this case. But you can see clearly at this point, this there is no slope in the graph. It's just a straight line like this, which is exactly parallel to the time axis. That means the slope is zero. And if the slope is zero, that would mean that delta S divided by delta t, which is the slope, right? S2 minus S1 divided by T2 minus T1. This would be zero, which would mean, so what, what is this? What this, yeah. what this delta stands for? Oh, the change in displacement. Change in displacement. This thing I wrote over here, S2 minus S1. So you can pick any two values like I described over here. So for example, this point, this point was, we use X and Y, right? So this is T2 and Y axis we have S2. And this point is T1 comma S1. So this is how you write down, uh, you denote the coordinates of your point really. Okay. So these are those two points. And so Delta S means change in the value of S. So we take a value of S, initial value of S. And so this thing is zero in this case, because you can see if you take any two points on this line, for these two points, there will definitely be two different values for T. But you can clearly see both of these points have the same value for S. So when I do delta S2 minus S1, they'll just give me, uh, uh, this is S1 and this is S2, but these two values, they, they are just a same one particular value. Let's just call it some S. So that would be zero. Two same values being subtracted would give me zero and hence this would give me zero. So that is a mathematical proof of this thing that the slope is zero. So I have shown you uh, both the uh, proofs, a visual proof uh, that this, there is no slope and the mathematical proof as well. Now, if this means, if this says that delta S by delta T is zero, we know that delta S by delta T is velocity. So this implies that the velocity is zero. So whenever you see a graph which is parallel to the time axis, then the velocity is zero. Zero. Right. Okay, so good. So that's case and if one. We see, and if we see yeah. a line parallel to P, P axis, like, so we can uh, determine that the time is zero and right. Oh, you mean, uh, okay, I, I think I got your point. So what you're saying is suppose that if we have uh, something that looks, I'll just quickly draw it. Uh, so yes, you mean sir. parallel to the S axis, right? Something like this, a line that is like this. 
Yeah, this thing. Right. Okay. So if you look at this thing, if I calculate the gradient in this case, which would be delta S by delta T, what is that? We see that if I take any two points on this line, suppose these are those two points. At this point, I have a, a value for S. Suppose it's S2. At this point, I have a value for S, which is S1. But the value for T is the same. So this would give me S2 minus S1 divided by, because the value of T is same, so the difference between a same value is zero. So you see that this becomes undefined, right? It's known as undefined. Defined. Right, which means that the slope is undefined, or you can say that the slope is infinite. Now, what that means is that the velocity is very large, right? So this means that the velocity is very large. It is extremely large. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. So we cannot really compute a particular value for velocity. It is just undefined. It's extremely high. So that's this thing. So this is another thing. And then you have another thing, which is uh, you can have, uh, how did we write it before? We wrote that the slope is zero, right? So the next case could be that the slope is less than zero. So if the slope yes. is less than zero, what does that mean? That means that the slope is negative, right? Yes. Okay, good. So I can draw that. And if I draw this thing, so increasing slope looked something like this. How would a decreasing slope look like? It would look something like this, right? Yeah, like decelerating. So yeah, exactly. So it's it's like it's going downwards. It's it's like slope downwards. So if I have a person running on this slope, he would just go downwards. So that's a negative slope. So yes. so here we have time, and here it we have. It will be like I think negative acceleration. Yeah. Will it not? Be? Uh, if at this point we are uh, looking at displacement versus time, um, right? So the velocity it would be decreasing, right? And if the velocity is decreasing, then you can say that it is negative acceleration or deceleration, okay. right? Uh, but we'll look at the graphs for velocity time graphs. We'll also look at those and we'll look at acceleration time graphs as well, right? So at this point, we are just looking at displacement time graphs. So yes, you can say that the acceleration, uh, there would be a decreasing acceleration or not really a decreasing acceleration, but a negative acceleration, which would mean that it's slowing down. So if I compute the two values uh, from here, I mean the, the gradient from here. So this would have be T2, this would be T1, and this would be some S2, and this would be some S1. And the slope is delta S by delta T. And so if I compute that S2 minus S1 divided by T2 minus T1, but note that, S1, we have two values, right? So uh, actually I wrote, I kind of, so here I think this would be uh, S1 and this would be S2. So this would be less than zero or it would be a negative value. Now, okay. if it is a negative value, then this would imply that the velocity is less than zero negative or it would imply really it would imply that we have a decreasing velocity yes right okay perfect now finally we can look at a case where the slope is greater than zero right so let's call this case three we have an increasing slope so increasing slope would look something like this, a straight line. So here clearly the slope is increasing. So it's like this. And so if I pick two points over here, so it's the same story, right? So you'll have some T2, you'll have some T1, and then on this line, you'll have some S1, and here you will have some S2. 
and this slope will be delta s by delta t which would be s2 minus s1 divided by t2 minus t1 and this would be greater than zero because the slope is increasing s2 minus s1 would be a value positive value so this would imply that the velocity is increasing So is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect, good. So or you can also write it as B is greater than zero. So these are your displacement time graphs. Now we can quickly summarize everything. So let's just do it over here. So, if I have a graph, now I would like you to tell me what's happening, right? So if I have a graph that is uh, this thing and we have displacement here and this is this one. So tell me what's happening in terms of velocity in this case. You can see that uh, the displacement is same at every point. So what would be the velocity? Velocity would be, I think, zero. Yeah, exactly. So this is the case of zero velocity. Now, if I, so this is case, you can say that this is this first thing. Then you have a graph. Suppose this is the graph that you have again time and displacement and it's like this so this is the one that we just discussed right so what is uh, happening to velocity over uh, here the, the velocity is increasing exactly so it's increasing velocity then we have this thing it's i think the negative yeah so here the velocity is decreasing Okay, perfect. All right, so uh, I, I, I would like to apologize at this point. I kept uh, talking in terms of velocity. Uh, I will also make this correction. I should have been saying displacement for these graphs uh, and I'll also tell you why. So this is displacement is decreasing uh, and I'll just correct all of this very quickly. So one second. Because I just realized if you look at these uh, graphs, it's not the velocity that's increasing or decreasing, it was the displacement and for some reason I kept using the word uh, velocity. So let me just okay. fix that and I'll tell you why, right? So this is decreasing displacement. Okay, so if you look at this graph, let's come back over here and let me see if I... All right, yeah, so that all of that is correct. Now, here we have the displacement is increasing because you can see displacement has a different value at each point and it's increasing, right? So it's becoming larger because as, as I travel upwards in this direction, the value keeps increasing, right? So the displacement keeps on increasing. If I find the slope of this graph, which would be a particular value, it would be one constant value. So in, if, it, if I have to talk in terms of velocity, it would have a constant velocity. Because why? Because the slope at every point on this graph is a constant slope. You can see that the slope is just the straight line. If I had a graph which looked something like this, it's a curve now. In this case, the slope is not constant, right? The slope is increasing because how will I check I'll draw a point, I'll 
and I'll draw a tangent at every point. And that would be the slope. That's how you'd find the slope of the curve, right? So if you want to find a slope of the curve, just borrowing some knowledge from mathematics, at this point, if I want the slope, it would be this tangent. So you can see that this tangent is small. This one is smaller compared to this one. So the slope has increased. And here the slope was some other value, some less value compared to this one. Okay. So right? I think it would be it would be like directly proportional, this uh, the middle one, like if the yeah, exactly. is time exactly. also. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So as time will go forward, displacement will increase in a direct proportion to it. So that's why okay. the ratio of S and T would be a constant value at every point. It would be a same value every point. Whenever. So you know that you can take any two points on this graph and compute the slope, right? So if it doesn't matter if I take these two points, if I take this point and this point, Whatever points I take, if as long as it's a straight line, the slope will be a particular same value everywhere. So these were uh, uh, these are the cases where we have velocity is either constant or it's zero. In this case, it's zero because you can see that at every second which is passing, displacement is not changing, which means that if an object was placed somewhere, it's not changing its displacement. It is still standing over there at, because at every second time passed, the displacement is a same value. So it's not changing, right? So this means that the velocity is zero because that means the object is not moving. The only way that displacement will not change is if the object is not moving. And if the object is not moving, that would imply zero velocity. So yeah, so that's uh, this thing. And uh, just give me a second. All right. Okay, so now you can also have a case of increasing or decreasing velocity. Let's quickly discuss those as well. So if I have a displacement time graph that looks, something that I just explained, by the way, uh, it looks like this. Then this is a curve and you can see that the slope of this curve is at this point, for example, I'll draw a tangent. Now I'll pick any two points on this tangent. So you can pick this one and this one, and you can find the slope. And, and if when you do, that will give you the velocity of the object at this particular point. Then you can also, maybe you want to find the velocity at this point. So I'll use another color. Let's suppose that you want to find it at this point. Then what I'll do is I'll draw another tangent on this point. And a tangent line is just a line which touches a one particular point on a curve, right? So then I'll take any two points on this. Uh, then I'll take any two points on this tangent, right? And taking those two points on this tangent, I'll find the slope using the same thing, right? Delta S by Delta T. And this would give me the velocity at this point, this one green point on this curve. So in this case, we can see that the slope is increasing, right? The slope is increasing. And if the slope is increasing, because this thing will be, uh, this thing will be different at every point. So it will, will be different at every point on the curve. Right? And similarly, I can have a graph. So uh, I'll say this thing is increasing velocity. Why? Because the slope is increasing, right? So is that clear? All right. So then we ha also have a graph which could look something like this. And suppose a graph looks like this. It's a curve, but in this way. So uh, what's happening over here? As time passes, 
the displacement is slowing down. So the displacement is coming to a particular constant value. So that means that the change in displacement is becoming slow. And so I can check if I draw a tangent at a point. So suppose I draw a tangent at this point, the tangent looks like this. But if I draw another tangent, suppose at this point, then it looks something like this. Clearly, what you can see is that this red tangent is smaller compared to this one. If I compare it with the horizontal axis, right? So this makes an angle which is smaller compared to what the angle that this slope makes, which means that the slope is decreasing, right? And we have already established that slope is delta S by delta T, which is velocity. So this implies that we have a case of decreasing velocity. So is that clear? <laughs>